Keep me caught up to date with Tennessee football recruiting as you rock the nice sport coat, Caleb Calhoun, always updressing me. <laughs> well, this uh, cl- this recruit won't necessarily dress up the class on paper, but he could be the steal of the class, as I wrote on Friday. Jeremiah Hurd is a two, 247 sports composite three-star at a model high school in Rome, Georgia. He is a three-star on 247 sports and on three but he's not yet rated on Rivals or ESPN. The reason for that is he's a member of the 2024 class. He didn't play football until this past year, which would have been his junior year. He hadn't played football since eighth grade before then. So he missed ninth and 10th grade playing football. So he's just now getting noticed. And Tennessee was one of the first schools to offer him. Alabama has since taken a pretty big interest reportedly. And it sounds like Georgia had taken an interest too. And it sounded like it was going to take this year for him to really build his profile. But Tennessee offered first, so he committed to Tennessee. He stands at 6'7", 295. I think this is somewhat of a, you could say a gamble, but I think it has more to do with, look, Tennessee has the best defensive line recruiter in the SEC. And I mean, in terms of recruiting and in terms of talent evaluating in Rodney Garner. So my guess is Rodney Garner just found this guy before anybody else found him and that you're going to start seeing more hype grow behind him over the coming months as more schools get interested. Okay. So let me ask you about him for a second, because basically he's three different kinds of players. He's, you know, when he's not ranked, he's either the type of player that Tennessee saw early and they wanted to go ahead and offer because they think he's really, really just that good. Okay. There's the other type of prospect that he could be that you're in the Georgia area. You want to get a head start on the Bulldogs because you think other programs like uh, Georgia will c- come calling. Now, I know we're projecting here, and he's a three-star guy now, but th- the third option is he just isn't very good and can't play, which I don't think that's the case. But when we talk about Hurd at 6'7", 295 pounds, do you think other schools will come calling, like Georgia, which is just down the road? And also address, if you can, Caleb, how it's odd to me, at least it is to me, maybe it's not you, these guys typically commit and hold them used to be when you committed throughout the year and you didn't have the early signing day in December, a commitment in April. I just always thought it was stupid. I didn't think it held half the time. They do hold most of the time now. So thoughts on other schools coming after herd and why he may hold, because that tends to be the norm, which still surprises me. I think and I can't prove this. So to, to your second question. Okay. I think a lot of what goes into recruiting visits has to do with donor money. Like we know the facilities, like the college football facilities are the best in the world. They're better than the NFL facilities because there was no, you weren't allowed to pay players. So they poured all their money into the facilities that came through donor money. So I think a lot of what went into a recruiting visit came with. So I think the recruiting visits were much more fun before NIL. And I think some of the donor money is being redirected to pay the players rather than make sure they have the best experience possible on their recruiting visit. Okay. So it's not worth it to take all these visits anymore. Now that's interesting. Okay. So you're saying when they roll out the red carpet during the football season, which they still do, but most of the guys are already committed. So when they roll out the red carpet or big orange carpet, you, you, you don't think that that is as big of a factor as coaches identifying guys early, having them to summer camp. And are you taking this a step further that a financial deal is already in place with some of these guys? Like Nico? I think, I think, I think for some, a financial deal is already in place. I think the other part is, I think the red carpet is just not the red carpet that it used to be. And so I think that I can't prove it. Cause I don't know the, I don't know if the recruiting budget comes from donor money, comes from the just directly what the football program generated in revenue. I don't know how that money was, you know, redirected. But what I will say is if donor money was going to the recruiting budget, then that money is going to be spent less on the recruiting budget and more on buying the players, meaning the schools may deprioritize whatever they do and there were some suspicions on some things Tennessee did back in the day to give the recruits the best experience possible when they visit campus. I, th- I think it's 
I think it's a little bit simple and maybe maybe more simple than that. There could be a financial arrangement in place. Uh, there's not supposed to be with recruiting, but there could be. And the other thing that I think is the simplistic way of answering why guys are committed early and sticking early is I truly believe that with with the ability to transfer that these guys look at it as, hey, I might be at school X for a year, but if I don't dig it, I'm cruising. So I think that's part of it as well. You make the early commitment. The sales pitch is just completely different now. You're saying, you're saying Caleb Calhoun, you want to be a part of my program at Hooker University. <laughs> at Hooker University. Great school. Yeah, it's a great school. It's got an AD. Or no, yeah, uh, Hooker's the AD, and you can get an associate's degree if you want and just plain pimping. But, but, but yeah. You I'm asking, the associate's degree. I'm sorry. Pimpin yes, is like I, I'm telling you in – this is why I think they're sticking along. In April, March, April, May, I can tell you that I'm holding this scholarship for you as long as you keep progressing and I don't hear that you're skipping class in high school and, and I think you're progressing as a football player. And you can always transfer if you're not happy. And trust me, any coach now worth his salt – is going to tell you that you need to transfer if you can't find a spot on the field pretty quick. I think it's as simple as that, Caleb. I think that's why guys are committing earlier. I think Tennessee is still out in front of the curve of the Georgias and Alabamas because they have to be. But I think as much as anything, Josh Heupel is getting commitments saying, listen, you're going to love it so much that if you don't like it, then you can just transfer. It's that simple. You can cruise on. And he hasn't held anybody back from transferring, nor does he even have the power to anymore. You know, that's a good point. I never thought about that. I was thinking like three layers down the road, and you're right, it is a lot more simple. It is the transfer portal opens up more opportunities. As for this guy, uh, the first question you asked, which was, is it – well, it was three things. It was, was he really, really good and just hasn't been noticed yet? Was Tennessee trying to get out of the head of, ahead of Georgia because he's in Georgia, or is he just not very good? I think it's a combination of the first two. I think they think he's going to be really, really good. And I think they scouted him last fall playing football. But again, you have to remember, he hasn't gone to any camps. He hadn't been with any, he hadn't done any of that stuff because he hadn't played football until last year in high school. So I think Tennessee scouted him. And then they saw, they said to their, they thought this is a Georgia kid. We need to go ahead and offer him now before he starts to rise through the camps this spring and football next fall where he starts to rise. So we need to go ahead and get him now. I think that's what they thought. And again, if, if anybody's going to scout talent that's not yet recognized on the defensive line in the SEC, Rodney Garner's that guy, isn't he? No, I would certainly think so. And I, I think you have another sales pitch with Robert Ayers and that you, you're you working with not only a guy who has developed players in Rodney Garner for a number of years in the SEC, but you're also talking about a guy who played in the league for right at – a dozen years so that's pretty impressive now the transfer portal is set to open and i think you would ideally only be in the market for one or two players at the very most so let me let me go into the transfer portal uh, for a moment and get your thoughts and see if people are interested in these guys over at uh, tennessee because i think they're going to pick up a couple of people in this uh, new transfer portal because guys can figure out hey i'm not a great fit at my current university, let's make a move somewhere else. We're seeing that in basketball, but the football calendar, I think you're going to see that even more. <laughs> 